Welcome again, everybody, and thank you for joining the InfoSim Global Webinar Day. Our topic today is why is this app so terribly slow? How to achieve full application monitoring with StableNet? My name is Dietmar Kneidel, Director of Sales Europe with InfoSim, and I will be your moderator for today's event. Joining us from our headquarter office here in Würzburg, Germany, is our Director of Project Management and also a founding member of InfoSim, Matthias Schmidt. Matthias is a graduate from the University of Würzburg with a degree in Computer Sciences. He leverages over a decade experience leading high-profile solution projects that have been critical to reaching each of InfoSim's milestones of customer success. And in addition to working at our headquarter office, Matthias has led projects at our office in Singapore, helping us to expand our global reach in the Asia-Pacific region. Good evening, Matthias, and welcome to our Global Webinar Day. I think you might be still muted, Matthias. Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, hello, Dietmar. <laughs> Well, not that we haven't had that mistake before today. And for those of you who are wondering why it's good evening, uh, of course, we're doing these webinars uh, from our uh, headquarter office here in Würzburg, Germany. So we're on German time, which is uh, 9 p.m. Uh, we're doing three webinars in one day. That's what we call it a global webinar day. So we started this morning, our morning here in Germany with the webinar for the Asia Pacific region and then following six uh, hours after that for the uh, EMEA region. And now we have uh, reached our evening and your afternoon and doing the webinar for the uh, North American region. So Matthias, thanks again. It is a first for you here with us. Uh, thanks again for taking the time to do this. We know that your calendar is always filled and booked. So uh, again, thank you. Before I hand over to Matthias, I have a few household items that I wanted to let you know about. First off, all of you are automatically muted just to keep down the background noise. So for us to be able to see and answer your questions, please type them in the questions window at the bottom of the GoToWebinar application. We will be taking care of all of those questions either directly in the chat or at the end of today's webinar, our Q&A session. Also, please be aware that this event is being recorded and uh, we'll inform all of you tomorrow with a short email on how to access that recording. And finally, since we're again giving away three Amazon gift cards on this Global Webinar Day, I strongly advise you to answer the trivia question that is going to be part of a short questionnaire. Uh, you will have the chance to fill that out when leaving today's webinar. Well, that's uh, pretty much everything from my end so far. So I'd like to go ahead, turn things over to our presenter, Matthias. Matthias, it's your show now. Yes, thank you, Dietmar. At first, I want to introduce you to the agenda of today's webinar. The first topic will be why you need holistic monitoring for all your company applications. The second topic will be an explanation how the technologies which are offered by StableNet can help you to master this challenge. And the last topic will be an exclusive insight into the full application monitoring for a global company. At the end, you have the possibility to ask some questions and I will try to answer them. The classical network monitoring situation is that you have only one central monitoring view which shows the network here. So you have only information about the current network and everything seems to be fine. Still one of the customer is now complaining about a very bad service quality. But you are having no information or incomplete monitoring information from the server side. And you don't know where this problem occurs. You have no reference measurements from other locations or endpoint. The next issue is no object quantification of subjectively bad quality. Is it really that bad? Perhaps the customer moved from the headquarter to a location outside with not that big bandwidth and so he thinks the application is slow but in reality it's fine and he could work with but you're missing a subjective measurement which um, measures the end user quality. 
So that means the customer is already unhappy and you can only reactively work but not proactively. So you can't avoid um, a problem in, in, in advance, you have to wait until the customer is complaining. That might be an administrator's nightmare. Because he's unable to solve the issue, he can't identify the root cause. This is very important. But for this, there is a solution. The solution is the highly distributed SNEAR measurement setup. This allows you a quantification of the quality levels. You have objective KPI measurements which represents the end user experience of his service. You can also localize the problem. You can see if only one or two locations are involved or if all locations are involved which gives you a very easy hint to where the problem of, um, is, is coming from, where is the root cause. And you can correlate it with different measurements. So you cannot only measure the network, you will also measure in parallel the service quality from different locations which allows you to identify the root cause. And you also have the possibility to use the SNARE agent to log in and investigate additional information um, using on-demand measurements which gives you additional information. So you can have an anticipation of failures due to continuous proactive 24-7 measurements. The measurements are running the whole time and as soon as one threshold is exceeded, you can proactively react and solve the issue before any customer can complain. So you will have an overall higher customer satisfaction. That means everything is under control. If you save six minutes a day, for 1,000 customers, that leads to 6,000 minutes, which are one hour, 100 hours a day. That means you have more time and more money. An example why application monitoring is so important are the latest news of a global outage. There was a Skype outage some days ago for several hours. There you could see how important a service is and what impact it can have. For me personally, I could not set up a telephone call with my colleagues and so I had a very bad user experience. I was an unhappy user, but there were happy competitors. I switched over to go to meeting or used my mobile phone to set up calls and additionally there had been also a bad press about this issue. So think about which is the most important application in your company? Is it well monitored and could you be able to proactively work if any threshold is exceeded so the customer won't complain? So after I showed you why it is so important to have this holistic monitoring, I will show you now how the technologies which are offered by the statement can help you to master this challenge. The target is the holistic approach. For example, we have here a weather map in StableNet representing a complete service. It's a web service which consists of two load balancer and a web server farm which is documented with a wiki device and some database servers which are used by the web server farm. As you can see, everything is green, but please be aware every indicator here which is green represents a set of KPI monitors of the corresponding object. For example, the load balancer is green because of the CPU is fine, memory usage is fine, disk is fine, there are no log entries, the parameters from the load balancer are fine, the setup is working well and so there is no problem. 
and in total in the upper left corner you can see the complete service state, everything is green. To achieve, to achieve the holistic approach um, you need KPI monitoring. So if you have this service cloud where all your services are included with different kind of services, you have to set up measurements, so-called KPIs, key performance indicator, using different technologies from StableNet to monitor. And as mentioned before, you not only have to set up one measurement per service, but a set of measurements to really identify and also to proactively monitor all parameters of your service. Because of the number of KPIs, you can normally set up a distributed setup of agents, which then put the data in the database. But how can this distribution of agents achieved? The distributed, highly scalable architecture of StableNet meets all your needs. We have three different kind of agents. At first, the most powerful solution is the StableNet appliance. There you could also install the middleware in the database, so you would have a full solution in one application. Additionally, as mentioned above in one of the first slides, you can also have the SNIA agents, which can be put in all your locations to have an end-to-end -end user experience for all your users in every location. And last but not least, we also offer the possibility, offer the possibility to install the client agent and servers. This is sometimes required if you want to monitor services which don't provide the information using a protocol and which are only accessible on the local device. Then the agent can read out this information locally and provide it to the StableNet server. So after I've now shown the different StableNet technologies to achieve the holistic monitoring, I will give you now an exclusive insight into how the StableNet was used to achieve full application monitoring for a global company. Some words about the company. It is a globally distributed company with over 10 billion, billion, 10 billion euro revenue more than 100 locations and more than 50,000 employees. And now some StableNet facts for the project I was responsible for. We had two StableNet high availability installations with 20 high available agent applications, that means we had 10 pairs, and additionally 94 end-to-end -end agents. These agents were installed on nearly all locations worldwide and simulated user experience. They triggered every five minutes, for example, Outlook had written an email, sent it and waited until the email was received. All those steps were measured and whenever one of these times takes too long, for example to send or to write an email, an alarm is triggered and the corresponding administrator group can proactively check the issue and solve it before any customer can complain. The Outlook is only one example. In total, 219 different services were or are monitored on 8,000 servers connected via 9,000 network devices. In total, there are around 350,000 measurements running. And those measurements were used to monitor more than those 200 different services. I will show you now some example of services we were monitoring. So at first, the IBM AS400 um, does not use a standard protocol, so a so-called business script was um, developed which monitors the scheduling and the last execution of AS400 jobs. For Oracle, for example, we monitored the space usage of the database, the number of logged in users and the number of processes, how long it takes to log in, 
and the health state of different components like the index, log file, media, and the number of log switches in within one hour. And what is very important, the scripts can be adapted to support also Oracle, which are installed on a cluster. This is very important because many Oracle installations are running in a HA setup in a clustered system. Nearly the same parameters can be also read from Microsoft SQL. You can also monitor Microsoft Exchange, Link, VMware. We don't only monitor the VMware server, but also the hosts. We check the disk usage, CPU usage, memory usage of all hosts. And we also can monitor SharePoint. And last but not least on this list, I have the application all application servers which are based on JMX. All those monitoring led to the following achievements. The customer now has a holistic view over all globally used services. In combination with the root cause analysis, it is very easy to proactively avoid service degradation. The installation also replaced a monitoring zoo by one unified management solution, StableNet, <laughs> including fault management, performance management, and ticket system integration. That means whenever one KPI reaches its threshold, a ticket is automatically generated and assigned to the specific administrator group so they can immediately work on the issue and proactively solve the issue before any outage occurs and the user is uh, complaining. We also simplified the extensibility and integration of new services. It is now very easy for the customer or partner to modify and extend the StableNet installation if new services are installed. The number of interfaces StableNet offers makes it very easy. And as a last topic, I want to show you the future. We are currently working on the StableNet service workflow. So that means you can define services. For example, you can set up a VM server with Oracle and put all the definitions of CPU, memory, hard disk space you require for the service in one definition and this can be deployed using StableNet. If this is deployed to your IT infrastructure, the devices and components will be put immediately into the inventory management of StableNet and also automatically the performance and fault monitoring is started for those components. So now you have the possibility to start the performance analysis and check if all parameters are correctly set up. For example, you can check if the defined memory is sufficient or perhaps it's too much memory which is assigned to the service and you can adapt your service definition to the requirements and then the cycle starts again. These modifications are deployed using StableNet and all other parameters are adapted so the performance and fault monitoring always checks every required KPI parameter. This is what we are currently working on and now I want to summarize this webinar. I showed you how important it is to have a holistic view of service cloud. In addition with the global root cause analysis, it is very easy to identify a problem very quickly. So for example, if a database failure where different services are using um, has a problem, the, um, the administrator can focus on the database and if this database is up again, all the other services will run also. But ideally, you have a proactive monitoring. That means before a service has a problem which is uh, seen by a, a customer, you can fix the issue. The KPIs measure, are measuring continuously and if a threshold is met, 
the administrators get alarmed and can solve the problem. So that means you have a reduced mean time between failure and the mean time till repair. And now this is, uh, and so you have a higher return of the investment. And in totally, you have a overall higher customer satisfaction. So now I finished with my topics and we can now start with the questions um, from your side. Alrighty, thank you very much Matthias. So into the Q&A session. Um, up front, uh, this is a question that usually pops up during the webinar, at least from one or two attendee. Um, e the slides for this webinar are of course available. I just uh, uploaded them in the handout section in case you haven't discovered that yet. It is uh, one section in your uh, GUI for a global webinar. Uh, so you can see global webinar 2015-09-24, how to achieve full application monitoring with StableNet. The PDF is available and you can download that right now. Now on to the questions. Uh, we received quite a number of them. Uh, we're able to answer, uh, I think most of them, uh, directly in the chat, but I picked out a few that I thought might be of general interest. Uh, Matthias, be warned, there are a few easy ones and a few not so easy ones. So let's start with a with a, with a simple one, I guess. Uh, you mentioned the uh, StableNet Embedded Agent uh, during uh, the webinar. Uh, we call it SNIA, but well, that's just the abbreviation for it. So. Um, is it, that's again a question from one of our attendees, is it only possible to use those StableNet embedded agent in, in those remote locations you were talking or can that be done uh, by any other agent as well? Yes, you can use also the standard flat agent to uh, monitor also from the location and depending on the setup of your location, um, it makes sometimes sense to use uh, those agents to monitor locally a huge network using uh, the standard agent for this. Okay, that I guess pretty much answered that question. Now another question that popped up is, is there some sort of limitation as to what type of application StableNet can monitor? Do we have a a physical limit or a, a logic limit or any other kind of limitation as to uh, monitoring applications of various uh, types? No, there is no limitation. Uh, in general, we have um, many protocols which allows the interaction with services and every parameter which is available in any digital way, we can read out and provide this information to StableNet for measuring the KPIs. All right, um, so I hope you're not mad at me, but I'm going to challenge that statement because I have another question which is a little bit more more in detail. Um, one of our attendees uh, would like to monitor three components of an, an in-house application uh, of a customer. So those three components, uh, so one of the components is a database, a Sybase database. Uh, the next component is some business logic um, that was uh, put together using uh, Jaguar software, so it was developed with uh, a .NET or Power Builder um, application. And the third part of that, uh, or the third component, uh, is a, a front-end accessed uh, through a client that is uh, installed on a desktop. So the question here is, would, would it be possible to monitor this in-house application? And don't, don't answer yet, there's more to come. Uh, he already uh, provided us with a couple of KPIs. So the KPIs for monitoring this uh, application would be, um, well, if we, got, if we got four of them, I'm sure that's not all, but those four would be like, is the service running? Uh, is the application port open? Um, is the process running? And um, last but not least, how many concurrent users are accessing the application? So, um, I well, that's actually more than one question. Uh, did you did you get all of that? Do you want me to repeat yes. part of it? You, you're looking a bit you're looking a bit distorted. <laughs> yes, I try to answer, but if I forget something, you can uh, ask again. So at first, um, yeah, it's possible to monitor all the things. So. 
in addition to the standard hardware monitoring of the servers like uh, CPU, memory and disk usage, um, of course we can monitor the SQL database, checking the performance regularly to see if there is any issue with the database performance. We can pr also check the number of logged in users on the database and we can also monitor the, the, the application. Um, I would also recommend to set up some so-called end-to-end measurements which simulate the user input. That means um, the stable agents regularly opens this um, client GUI, makes some interaction like login, doing something, creating something, deleting something and check how long each step takes and whenever one of those uh, time needed for one action exceeds a threshold, an alarm can be raised to, uh, to make it possible for proactive monitoring. We can of course also check if the services are running on the device, the SQL server service and also the application service itself and we can also check if the port the application is responding on is active and uh, check this from all locations to see for example if there are some firewall issue for some locations which which block the service. So you can easily identify if there are some misconfigured firewall setups. Some topics I missed? Uh, yeah, what about the concurrent users accessing the application? Is there a way to figure that out? Yeah, it is also possible, so whether it depends on the application, we can check if the number of users corresponds with the number of logged in users in the database or we can check the application itself if uh, it provides this information in any digital way so we can read out and provide this information to StableNet for monitoring. All right, um, that pretty much answers the question. Um, I feel I'm making it too easy for you, Matthias. Uh, maybe we should, you know, take this up a notch because uh, I have uh, a question that made me smile and um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to smile with that. Um, <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned the, the Skype outage we had uh, a couple of days ago. So uh, the question, and it is sort of a theoretical question, but nonetheless, uh, I think it's, it's worth discussing it. What should Skype have been monitoring uh, to prevent the outage they had? Could they have anticipated or prevented it? Now, given the fact that you know Skype did not really uh, reveal the reason, at least I've read nothing. Uh, they said, well, it was an outage here or there. Um, so uh, since they didn't reveal the, the real reason, I mean, we can, we can only speculate. But uh, so from your point of view, what would, it's a global application, it's uh, something millions of people are using. Um, how, how would they have, uh, what, would they have, what would they have to be done or what, what would have been needed for them to uh, monitor that or to potentially prevent or anticipate the outage? Yes, if you would have such an application like Skype, I would recommend to put in many different locations worldwide an end-to-end -end agent, could be also a SNIA agent, which simulates such calls. So you can immediately see if it's only an outage in a specific area or is it a global out outage as seen uh, with this Skype outage. And, um, and the SNIA agents uh, can, for example, simulate voice calls. So this is very often used at customer setups which are using VoIP. Um, which are having VoIP uh, telephony and they put SNIA agents in all locations and simulate continuously one call from the location to the central telephone system to check if everything is fine. And this is the, the normal setup and if there are any problems regarding the jitter, the most value, one, uh, one delay, one way delay, this can be monitored and checked. All right. Um, I'll be honest with you, Matthias. I'm not yet convinced. Um, I'm, I'm, well, I'm playing the part of the, you know, uh, uh, critical attendee. Um, uh, there's, there's something more coming in. I have to read that in a second. But um, 
we're talking about a global application. There's millions of people using it. Um, would that not be eventually, I mean, how many, how many of those SNEAs, for instance, how many of those small agents uh, would actually be, you know, uh, how many, how many can StableNet handle? Is there a limit to that? Do we have some, some sort of, well, oops, we can't do more than that. Um, I know we have one customer, so I partially know the answer. Um, I know we have one customer that has several ten thousands of those agents out there in the field, and uh, I know they're handling it with one standard stable net server, no specific hardware, standard server hardware. But could we do more? Is there a technical limit? No, in general there is no technical limit. We have a highly distributable um, agent architecture which allows you to install yeah, as many agents as you like. Of, of course, you have to check the database size. This is normally what is, uh, there are some limitations, but uh, in general, there, there is no limitation and yeah, you can install as many as you think would, would make sense. For example, for such a uh, uh, globally service, I would recommend to put at least in each country one of those devices or in the most important cities. I think you, 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 normally you would know which are the most important locations with m many customers and there you should put at least one SNEA agent to check the quality. Okay. Um, I think that's sufficient uh, for the time being. Now I have an, another question. Actually, it's two more questions because uh, we're already overstepping our uh, set time frame for a couple of minutes. So I'm sorry for that, but uh, we'll be done. We'll be done in a couple of minutes. Um, the the second last question would be: Do we have does StableNet come with scripts ready to monitor applications like Outlook, Salesforce, Links, and so on? Do we do we have that out of the box, or is that something we would have to build? Of, of course, we have a standard setup, but um, we found out that each customer has specific setups which requires an adoption. So if you have an application you want to monitor please don't hesitate to contact us and we can um, provide you all the information and uh, scripts and uh, parameters you, uh, you require to set up such a monitoring. Okay, um, thank you for that. I've answered the question pretty much. So we do have uh, ready to deploy scripts, but they would usually need a little bit of adaption. Uh, but in, in general, that is not a problem. It's not a lot of work uh, anyhow. Okay, there is there is one final question, and uh, you can decide if we're going to answer that in, in all detail or maybe we're not going to answer that. We'll, we'll see about that. Um, so the question is, when you roll out uh, StableNet agents, uh, might it be uh, agents on, on huge appliances or standard PCs or even on uh, the SNEAS, is there a way you can you can use, and again, these are not my words, this is coming from the audience, is there a way that you can use tagging to build your service views? Let me go a little bit more into detail. So what, what, what uh, our uh, attendee is thinking of, you know, is there a way to model a distributed service? How, how would you group all this together? Is there uh, some, some sort of mechanism uh, to basically show the flexibility of the product, like you know, uh, have the service view, have uh, specific views based on tagging, and uh, again, it's up to you. Are we going to answer that, or are we going to you know keep it uh, give give a vague answer because we have some more things to come? No, it's currently possible to use the um, the category fields to set up. Um, so-called weather maps and these weather maps represent the service. I'd shown you some slides before the service with this web service where you can put the devices and if you tag them in the category fields it is very easy to set up such a, um, a weather map. But to improve this and to be more flexible we are currently working on the tagging concept and this uh, allows you to, to uh, to, to set up such um, weather maps more easily. 
Okay, that's probably all we're going to say about that. Um, we've uh, revealed a little bit more uh, to our partners here. We had uh, last week we had our annual uh, Infosim partner workshop. There was a little bit more information given to the partners. So uh, if you have contact with an Infosim partner or if you're more interested in that, feel free to drop us a line and maybe we'll let you in on one or uh, two of the secrets. Uh, it's safe to say um, this is something that's not going to uh, be available in the next release, which is uh, going to be available at the beginning of the next quarter, which means uh, around about uh, October. But um, there is there's more in the queue. There's really a couple of interesting things in the queue, which going into the direction of, you know, modeling services, building weather maps, making things a little bit more easy, making a more benefit of the unified approach of StableNet. Well, um, we've overstepped our time uh, by six, seven minutes, so I think we need to be coming to an end. If you would. Uh, kick uh, one or two more slides in the presentation, Matthias, that would be nice. Uh, we have, of course, a lot more resources and number of topics available in the resource section of our website, so feel free to dive in there and uh, uh, download whatever you uh, see fit. So this brings us uh, to the end of our webinar. Again, thank you very much, Matthias, uh, for the presentation and uh, for um, being so brave in answering all of those questions. I know I made it hard for you, but uh, that's the way we like to do things here. Uh, may not make it too easy, stump our presenters a bit. So I also want to thank everyone for uh, joining our session today. Uh, as I've mentioned earlier, a recording of this webinar will be made available to all of you tomorrow via email. And uh, again, if you have any other questions, just feel free to contact myself or any other member of the staff with InfoSim. We will keep the session open just for a few more minutes in uh, case anyone from our audience decides to type in another question. Oh, and don't forget, we're giving away three Amazon gift cards on this global webinar day, so please answer the trivia question that uh, will be presented as part of a short questionnaire when you leave the webinar. Well, I guess that's all from us today. Matthias, any, any last words? No, I only want to say <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> You're happy to go home now, aren't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thanks again for joining. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, goodbye from uh, InfoSim.